Hello and welcome to another episode of John and Leon's Elvis Reviews and on this episode we'll be discussing Elvis's opening night of the 26th of January 1972 in Las Vegas. Um, I'm going to send you over to Leon, uh, he's going to tell you a little bit about the show and the story behind it and over to you, Leon. And oh, and by the way, first of all, good afternoon to you. <laughs> uh, hi, John. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this is probably one of Elvis's finest shows. Um, it, it, there's very little talking in the show. Um, it's shorter than the 12th of August 1970 midnight show that that, that, we, that we've uh, already done. Yeah. A two part on that, and that's elsewhere on my, on our channel. So that was the very first one we did on the channel. So go and have a look at that if you can. But th this show is probably one of Elvis's um, best opening nights. Um, we'll have what we're intending to do here. We're going to have a wee talk about the, the show in general, yeah, and how and how it fits into that season. Uh, RCA rolled up uh, later in that that very season to do some multi-track recordings, which was supposed to uh, go into an album. Um, which never materialised, and we'll we'll talk a wee bit about that later as well because um, we'll actually we'll finish off with um, a song not from this show, but f but from those multi-track recordings, and then we'll, we'll talk a wee bit about how that fitted in. But the reason what we're going to do, rather than talk about the whole show, because a lot of the songs are repetitive, they're the same songs that we um, yeah. did a lot of the time. What yeah. we'll focus on and what we'll go in, in depth to is the six songs that Elvis performed for the very first time that evening. Um, and amongst those six, there's a, a few absolute staples um, for Elvis's live show that would continue. Yeah, and we, so, and we, and we, we covered this um, when, when we were both on Buzzbeats Internet Radio. and uh, Yeah, we did, yeah. And, you know, for the people who haven't listened to that uh, Pacific Review, it's good to revisit it again. And yep. um, not only that, we're, we're not just picking a, a random show out of a random season. Um, as Leon says, you know, it stems on to other things. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's stories about, you know, uh, the album that never was and stuff like that. So there's a, there's a little bit of backstory behind this show, as well as the new numbers that Elvis has brought to the show within the season. So It's, it's also a good show to talk, talk about because... There is very a very good sound um, quality sounding soundboard recording of that, mm. and for whatever reason, um, Sony through through for that dream have never actually released that whole show, which is mind boggling they've in itself. E so that's they've just, really e good they've just eked it out over the years, you know. Yeah, there's about two or three tracks of it have appeared on different releases, but some of the best stuff on it is still the only way to actually hear it mm. is through an, an, an unofficial uh, release. Um, so that's what I think that's a good a good reason for us to talk about that show and and let people know that that such that show exists, um, and hopefully if they click on the links that we'll put below the description here, um, they can listen to those six songs that we're talking we're going to specifically talk about. And it's um it's the start of another year for Elvis as well. It's seventy two and uh, it's like. It's... <sighs> In Elvis's career, I wouldn't say it was on. It was going down the back burner. I think it was a, a quite a successful year for him, um, mm -hmm. and he still, he still, um, you know, he's still liking it at Vegas. You know, isn't the boredom's not set in yet? He's still, he's still good, and it's still on fire with with the 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 energy still up there with with the Vegas shows. Well, I'd, I'd say there's a kind of yes and no to that. I think some of the boredom had appeared in 1971, specifically probably in August, um, where some or where some of the dinner shows were like about 45, 50 minutes yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, and I think that it's kind really of came had... back. I think yeah, I get what you're saying there, Leon, because we have spoke about the boredom of 71, but 72, the 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 electricity is up there again I think well, yeah you're dead right and, and, and I put a caveat onto what I said there about, about, about 71 I mean when he went on tour in November in 71 he was absolutely electric I mean and it's carried it was, on to the Vegas season in 72 yeah and, it uh, definitely has but 72 was a good year I, I would say I don't think there's really much of a weak spot the whole of 72 I think no, he's done I think that's uh, with really re good record sales were good and then you've got the Madison Square Garden we might cover at some point um, yeah then you've got the announcement of Aloha so it's um, I mean, there's a couple of, I mean, within personal life, it's it's on a downward spiral, but as career-wise, yeah. it's it's pretty up there. 
and let's not forget about Elvis on tour as well. It was filmed during, in, well, during the April of that well, year. Well, that's it, you know, and uh, what a great movie that is as well. Uh, yeah. That we might cover at some point because that that would be a good one to cover yeah, you, uh, yeah, in the future. Um, yeah. So uh, the songs that Elvis has introduced within this set list was six six new songs. Is that right, Leon? Yeah, it was. Yeah, well, he, he started off the show with CC Rider. So this this was this was the first time that Elvis would would begin a show with CC Rider. Um, although CC Rider had already been, um, so it's not the first time he's performed that. No. But he opens the show with CC Rider, um, and this, for the most part of '72, he would alternate between CC Rider and That's All Right for right, opening yeah. shows, um, and then CC Rider would become the, sta- the standard opener. Um, he then goes on back onto Proud Mary, which gets reintroduced, um, now with a different arrangement. Both, both songs, um, to be honest. Both. Sorry? Both, yeah. both songs, Leon, yeah. Different yeah. arrangements this time round. Yeah, absolutely. And that extra verse, which he had omitted in, 19, in February 1970, comes back in. Um, and uh, it, the best way to see that, obviously, mm. is either listen to Madison Square Garden or yeah. watch it in, it was on tour, where you can actually see him perform it. Um, so having got yourself comfortable, he then goes into the first of the six new songs. Yep. Which is uh, never been to Spain. It's one of my favourites. I always say that. one of my favourites. <laughs> but um, I quite like this version. Some of the, it's just that the guitar solo is a bit stronger than yeah. you've, than the uh, on tour and uh, Madison Square Garden versions. <laughs> um, a bit more raw. Uh, it is. And, and I find. Um, when you to, to compare to this one and uh, on tour and the June versions, um, there's a lot more less strings and brass sections and stuff like that. It's more raw. It's more like it's the band playing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's it's still a little bit more raw than, than my opinion, and which, which I prefer. Yeah, what I like about about the version that he does and does in this opening night. Um, there's there's an official version um, that RCA filmed later in the season when they were doing the multi-track recordings. Yeah, but it feels a bit more polished then. And what I like about this one is he starts off in that really quiet, sort of almost um, talking, yeah. yeah talking way, and then when he goes into that that set, <laughs> when he goes when he changes up, I mean he's always virtually shouting, it, it, but. If you get what I mean, because yeah. it's but it's it's like that nineteen sixty nine growl when he does it. It's, it's abs and it, it's it, it's great to hear. It really it really is great to hear. And uh, but he only kept it in the set list for about two years because the last time he did it was um, in nineteen seventy four during that August show. August show. Um, and it's and it's just, almost and it's almost like the arrangement of the Three Dog Night. Almost exactly the same. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're right, and, and and I think it fits almost like an absolute glove. Um, yeah, it's bluesy. Um, still, he's telling a story again, mm-hmm. and uh, clever, cleverly written. Do, um, do you think? Do you think that a, a studio version would have worked as well as a live version? No, mm-hmm. don't think yeah. so, Leon. Because it, yeah. I don't know. It's just got that. I don't know. Maybe it's because we know it's a, a recorded song. Uh, mm-hmm. Alive, I mean, and try to put that into a studio environment. I don't think it would have worked. Mm-hmm. And what about the on tour version in San Antonio? Uh, it's good to visually look at, mm-hmm. but uh, like I say, it's just not got the same balls as the one that we're discussing now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, Madison Square Garden, the afternoon show. That version's yeah. pretty good, yeah. Rather than the official release one from '72, yeah. um, yeah. so if I'm going to listen to that song, I'll, I'll, I'll either listen to the one from this engagement that we're talking about, which mm-hmm. is in the January, mm-hmm. or I'll go to the one from the afternoon show on June the 10th, 1972. Yeah, my, this, this of all the fifty, there's about fifty-two versions I think that Elvis performed that we know of at the minute. And I think this was probably my favourite one. This the opening night, twenty sixth of January version. I think I like that. I think because it's so new to Elvis, I think that's what it is. And I think he's, there might be 
it's still a bit of working the song out, but yeah. it, it works. Yeah, and that, but that, that's what I like about the rawness of it, Leon, because it's brand new. It's not overly rehearsed, and you can yeah. tell when it gets to on tour that well, it has been. Well, that's it's, it's quite good you should mention that because th- mm. that 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 leads me on to something that, that I should have said before, mm. because it, most Elvis fans will know that, that an opening night, a Vegas night, is usually when Elvis would introduce new songs, and that's why we've got six um, in this show. Yeah. And um, but I think there's a there's probably a couple of reasons for that, and you mentioned it there. You can do all the rehearsals in the world, and usually before a Vegas session was the only time that Elvis really did any rehearsals apart from um, unless something special was coming up um, like of course you had Aloha before Aloha and stuff like that yes, of course. Um, but what you have is so you, you, Elvis has to do about fif- between about, around, around about four, 52 shows in 4 weeks so that, that allows any kinks or any problems with the song, it'll be arrangement or the way Elvis is delivering it to be worked to be worked out on a show by show basis. And yeah. one one perfect example, and I think we might have touched on this at some point before, John, was when Elvis introduced my boy to to his show in seventy three. Yeah. Um, he, he actually introduced it before um, he recorded it, and if you listen to the very first live version, there's as good a version as it is. He struggles with the lyrics, he struggles with that, and then. It goes, I think it's a show, he drops it for the next show, and then when he brings it back, they've obviously worked on it, and it's like a completely different song, and it really works. So so that's why I think um, that Elvis introduced the new songs in uh, open, uh, in a Vegas season. And it's also like he's trying to get a, a test on the audience, how they're going to respond to the song as yeah. well. No point yeah. in over and over rehearsing it if it's not going to go down well. So he thought, you know, let's give it a go on stage, see how the yeah. audience pick up on it, and if they dig it, then just keep working at it. Yeah, and I also think as well, of course, the other advantage of Vegas is you have that full orchestra there as well. So it allows you to have the more beefier arrangement that you wouldn't get on tour. So it allows everything to be worked through. Mm. Because if you introduce a new song um, during a tour, and then you want to take that into Vegas, you then have to work out an, an, an extra arrangement for string, for maybe for strings to come in, for example, so you, which might not work. Mm. So I think I think probably the best that's that, that's just the way I look at it anyway. That um, open a Vegas a Vegas season was definitely the best time to introduce new songs. Oh, definitely, and then that brings us on to uh, track number two of the of the new yeah. songs introduced, which is um, Marty Robbins' uh, self-penned uh, "You Give Me a Mountain." Yeah, well, let's be honest. Um, really a good song that. Oh yeah, and. And integral, it became after it was introduced. It just, be, it just became an integral part of an Elvis show. I mean, oh yeah, is I don't, I can't imagine an Elvis show between seventy two and seventy seven without you gave me a mountain in the show. Um, it's you can from from seventy five onwards, you can virtually predict exactly when when the song's going to be in the sh- in the in the show. It's always like about third song in or something. It's always yeah. like. It's it's he either does I think he he, he either does like C C Rider or that's all right then it's uh, I got a love, woman then it's love lo- me, then love, love me, me yeah. then it's you yeah. gave me a mountain yeah well <laughs> sometimes so occasionally occasionally maybe you'd have fairy tale or if you love me let me know before that and then and then probably probably mountain but um, yeah it's it's a song I absolutely love and I I tell you what I like about this this first version there's a there's a harp in it which you don't hear in most versions and I think it's also slower as well and I think that mm, has the yeah, poignancy of that song it is indeed yeah and but, uh, on the early on sorry <laughs> I, th- I, think, I think the pity about the song is it became it became more autobiographical than anything else um, as the years went on um, and Elvis always tries to state that it isn't. He says it's just a song that I like singing, and I thought, mm. yeah, but I but think hindsight. I think hindsight. Hindsight. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that kind of shows other ways. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> so what, I, I, I want to ask you something here, Liv. Yeah, what, what, sure, do you sure. com- what do you compare the two from? You know, this op- opening night. <laughs> excuse me. To the uh, Aloha from Hawaii version. What would you say is? A, would you say it's preferred the best one? Um, 
I, this one, de- this one definitely. I, I, I think I don't. The Aloha one, I think, was too early in that show. I don't think Elvis was completely in his stride yet. No. Um, and by the way, I, I, that's not to say that the Aloha show is a bad version because it, mo- it definitely isn't. But I think this, I think this version is. I think it, the pace that Elvis sings it at. Yeah. I think it suits the song. It, as I said before, it adds more poignancy to the song. But I'm going to contradict myself slightly because I absolutely have always loved the 21st of June 1977 version from Elvis in Concert. I was just a way to say that to you because <laughs> it, it, it creates a lot of controversy, the whole stigma around 77. But yeah. I like that version because at the end where he just, he just, don't know, it's a little, a little bit of trickery there and, you know, yeah. and he just slows it down and then he brings it back and, uh, you know... Elvis the professional yeah. still there. Yeah, uh, that that as I say that wee bit at the end, um, I think is I think that's brilliant. But he adds that extra wee bit, and that extra wee bit just just is coming up to the end. I absolutely love that. Oh, I think brilliant. that's brilliant. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, but I think what's also important to point out is that Elvis doesn't actually sing Marty Robbins's original lyrics. No, he doesn't. Um, no, because to anybody who doesn't know. Marty Robbins' original lyrics were um, despised and disliked by my father. That's but, right. But it was Frankie Lane who actually went to Marty Robbins and asked uh, for permission to change that line um, to deprived of the love of a father, um, um, and which is one that Elvis, the Elvis uses. Um, but I think... I think the original lyrics probably work better in the song. They <laughs> the do. Me, they do. The truth be told. Um, but, because... diff, but I think that would be a bit more difficult to sing because it despised and disliked by my... I don't know, the phrase would be quite difficult. It would be... I think Elvis personally would also have found it difficult to actually just use those lyrics, period. I think that, I think that would have been the problem as well. I think you really would have struggled with that. Um having such a having had such a good relationship with his father I think I think really that that would have um, but it's another song that he never did in the studio studio John um, do you think it's another song like uh, Never Been to Spain that probably wouldn't have been captured as well no because I think it's um, it's the whole band's there there's no overdubs and it, it's everything's live in that mm-hmm. live environment, which I yeah. don't think you could capture in the studio. I don't think so, unless everyone was there at the same time. But mm-hmm. you know, like sort of Elvis recordings didn't work that way, and yeah. uh, I just don't think it. I don't think it would have worked as a layer by layer song. Yeah, it, it worked as a whole. Yeah, there, there is of course um, the nineteen the, the other nineteen seventy two version um, from on tour. Yeah, um, which is I, I quite like that version that 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 Hampton Roads version. I quite like that. Sounds good. It sounds it does, very good. It does. Yeah. But I, I'm going to put the, the links to every to um, the Elvis Concert 1977 version, the on tour version, and this opening night version. I'll, I'll put them in the, the description so everybody can click on it and they can compare the versions for, them, for themselves. Exactly. Um, yeah. But what I would say is. Specific, what you get almost uniquely with this version, and I would encourage everybody to, to, to really listen, is that honestly that gorgeous, wonderful use of the harp during the intro, just before El- you actually even hear Elvis. And I think that really is which makes this version stand out. I know it's just one instrument, I know it's at the start, but I just you're think a bit it's... like me, Leon. Like, um, that was. <laughs> That one instrument can make a whole world of difference to a song. Oh, oh, def- oh definitely, definitely. It's a key ingredient. And um, just to recap my memory, what album is this on again? What CD it's, is it on again? Right, the, 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 it's, the, the best fit sounding uh, version is called uh, Talk of the Town. Talk of the Town, actually. Uh, yeah, um, it's an unofficial release. Um, there, are, there are, I think, three tracks from this show uh, on an American trilogy, which is an official release through Follow That Dream. But you you don't get anything in context that way, and um, that sound that's almost as, the sound of that is absolutely brilliant, um, and that's where you the audio the, if you click on the link that's where you'll get the audio audio from. Um, it's quite difficult to source now, to be honest. But um, if you can get a, if you could get a, can get a copy of it, it really is worth investing in it. Yeah, as like I say, it's a really good show. It really yeah. the energy is pretty good. It's a good listen. 
Oh, um, definitely. Yeah. Um, I think we've pretty much covered uh, this song. Um, <laughs> yeah. We, we tend to rattle through these now. Um, yeah. But, but the best it is, is that that's, that's, we're four songs into the show and that's two brand new songs already. Yep. And then we'll move on to the fifth song of the show, which is another new intro- introduction. And, I might add, a song we covered last week. Yep, until it's time for you to go. Yeah. It what do you think, what do you think of that version, John? Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't really bring the hauntingness to the stage, mm-hmm. but it works well as a live song. But I would say they're both different songs in their own right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do prefer the, the the recorded version over the live. I mean, that's my opinion. But like mm-hmm. I say, it does work well as a live song. And, yeah. uh, and I don't think he would have kept it in the set list if it didn't work. And uh, he did mm-hmm. sing it a few times on stage, so there you go. Yeah, the, the, to be honest, the very first live version I ever heard from Love was, was when An Afternoon in the Garden came out. That's right, that's where I first heard it too. Yeah, that was the first live, and I was quite excited about that, to be honest. Um, but it, as you say, John, it, it's almost a completely different song. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, oh yeah. It, it is. There, there, there's also, um, El, the MGM filmed a version in Greensboro during the production of um, Elvis on Tour, yeah. um, which is okay, but I think Elvis is he's taking it very light hearted I don't think he's this version from the 26th of January 1972 I think Elvis is taking this absolutely completely seriously yeah um, and I don't know if that's anything to do with the fact that he just he just he no longer recorded it and it was on, El, on Elvis now I don't know if that was um, if there's anything about that you know but I think it's all dependent on you know what kind of mood you're in? Not not just saying for Elvis's point of view, but just anyone's. You know, you could just take a song and just throw it away sometimes, and you know, and then you'll get a song where you're really into it. You know, yeah. that could be just the case here with this song. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it stayed on the set list, as you say. They must have thought it worked. It stayed in the set list for about four years. Yeah, of course. That's, that's what know? I'm saying. It's um, so, if if he felt that it didn't work, he, Elvis was no scared to to scrap it. Yeah, I mean, 20th of March 1976 and not in uh, Charlotte, the last time he, he, he performed it, so um, it's not as if it was... i tell you another good version that I heard, but um, uh, that I heard, um, the first ever um, unofficial version I ever heard was on the Request Box shows. Right. Um, in uh, August, uh, August 1975. Uh, that, hmm. that, that version isn't bad either to be honest but it's it's full Vegas arrangement on that but I think Elvis was, all, was also in quite a light hearted mood as well during that show <laughs> which is quite strange because didn't he they're no light hearted tracks because they? they, that the rest of that engagement was um, no they're not no they're not, they're not. Um, but I suppose you can make anything light hearted if you try hard enough I suppose well that's <laughs> I suppose. it and I think it, it, <laughs> I think it's all about being there as well as being uh, an audience member, being engaged with the song. Yeah. And we are, because we are not really seeing it, we're just listening to it. Mm-hmm. So they might have seen it totally different to what we're hearing it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then after the, this song, we moved on and, and the, 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 the pace was up to a bit. And, and we got that. It's almost a new arrangement to Polk Salad Annie after, after that. So this was. So in. Late 1971, Elvis had flirted between the intro, the spoken intro, and not having a spoken intro. It was like, um, you know, which way is it going to go here? Yeah. Mm. And then along comes this show, and now it's the version that you've seen on tour with um, Jerry Schiff and um, his bass being prominent prominent in it. Um not an arrangement I particularly like. I prefer the 1970 version. That's but that's just that's just me. That's just me. Um, I think that was where the song became more about being a showstopper than the actual song itself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, 
And then he moved on to Love Me, which was just a throwaway. But then we get a great version of Little Sister Get and Get Back. Now, this is where the Elvis had... We, we, we spoke, we did the 12th of August Midnight Show, um, John. That Little Sister Get Back version is absolutely fantastic, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's absolutely brilliant, brilliant song. Oh. Yeah, it is. But oh. this, is, this is about half the length of that. But we're in, in that version, he would go back and forward between the two songs. This, it's, a, it's just a straight medley. Does Little Sister, does Get Back, song finished. Yeah, I know. It's, it, although the production's good on it, the sound's good, but it's not got that 12th of August feel. It doesn't. But I still like it. <laughs> I do like it. Do the, drums like are, it. the drums are pretty prominent. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's really yeah, I do like good. it. And I think that throughout 72, Ronnie touched drum fills were crazy. They were all over the place, but in a good way, I mean. Oh, good, yeah. What a drummer, though. What a drummer, though. Oh, which brings us on to the next song. Um, that he's first done live is Big Hunk of Love. Oh, no, no, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Between Talk Salad Danny and Big Hunk, it was almost like a 50, sec- 50 section. Um, and Big Hunk was the first of them that he'd never done live in the 70s at all at that point. No. And you just, and when you hear it, you go, my God, you could be back in the 50s. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's practically spitting those words out. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? it is good. Well, well, do you know, there's one thing I say when I talk about this song, and I really say, and I'll say, who said Elvis in Vegas in the 70s couldn't do rock and roll? Talking Big out the behind. Oh, my goodness me. Now, if you like the Aloha version, if you like the Aloha version... Or you like the version um, from on tour, then go back and look at this this song because it, this outshines both of them. And both of those versions are fantastic, but I think this just really, really out, outshines them. Them, I just think, oh, it's because there, there's that fire and that gr- that growl there in it. Oh yeah, uh, and you know, you let me hear this for the first time a while back, and mm-hmm. I was completely blown away. Oh, it's, it's, uh, oh, it's, it, it, oh I've, I, I'm, I've got shivers on this page just, <laughs> just thinking about it. <laughs> it's so good. It really is. It really is, and it sounds. I mean, Elvis recorded it um, on the tenth of June, nineteen fifty-eight, just before he did his national service. In fact, it was the fourth last song he did that, but. This version is almost as almost like that. The, the arrangement is slightly different, obviously. Yeah. Um. But goodness me, oh goodness me! If only Elvis had performed every song they did in the fifties like that in Vegas, then it really. <laughs> I think the discussion about whether or not um, Elvis gave, can you, gave enough. Can you, to I want to throw a little bit of something. Can you imagine Elvis doing um, "I Need Your Love Tonight" in the seventies? If he, if he performed it like that, that would have been good. Like, oh, good. oh, definitely. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it just? But is that just another one of those? Mm, I wish we. I wish hindsight. Oh, <laughs> I know. I know. I know. But you know, we we've got what we've been given. Do you know what I mean? And we really should appreciate it for what we have. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that, that's the thing with Elvis. So he just leaves you wanting more. But do you know what strikes me when you listen to how good a performance of Big Hunk that is? It makes you wonder why he didn't include it in 1969. Comfort zone, maybe. Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe because it's quite a complex song to sing. Although it's just a straightforward rocker, but it's the phrasing and it's fast. Do you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. but. If he's going to be able to do Johnny Be Good well, he could have done this one good. I don't know. Yeah. But again, but that's us that, that's us that's looking at with his, what's his taken, again, isn't it's it? What's ta- it's what's taken Elvis's fancy at the time. Yeah. That's and obviously really this one did, and he does it really well. And I'm really glad he did. I'm really glad he did. And i got to admit, I do like the rehearsal 
uh, version of this from Aloha. Um, the piano is pretty decent. The solos are really good. Yeah. But but no, it's not the got that rawness of the fifties. Like, like attempt at the fifties rawness is you no. Know, it's, the, it's, the, it's the it's the polished version that you get in Aloha. In, in both shows, yeah, and as much well, as he's, it, well, he's been doing it for a whole year by that point. So. Yeah, yeah, um, it was the po- the Polish version that you get there. Um, what 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 I will say after after that? I mean, he went into um, Bridge after that, which is quite a good version of Bridge. He then did I did now I, I, I wish I wish actually um, I'm, I'm, I know we're not going to talk in depth about this, but this song. I'm going to include the link down, link um, down to this in in the the description to this song. There's a, a version of Lodi Miss Claudia that he does in this, and it's absolutely brilliant because yeah, it's good, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, this is one that we listened to together, didn't we, John? That's right. And, and it's it's great because he messes up a couple of times in it, or or I, in fact, it wasn't him. I think it was it was it not uh, James Burton didn't get his solo right or something with like that in that's it. Right, or not, yeah, no, that's yeah, that's right. That's yeah, right, yeah, yeah, and then he says, "So it's <laughs> it really is worth it, worth a listen." Um, and that leads us in nicely to one of obviously signature tunes, signature tunes, John, doesn't it? Yeah, which is uh, an American trilogy. Yeah. Now, I have to say, I don't know about you, but I do think the Aloha version is the go-to version for that. Oh, without you know, I mean, I think. And this is my opinion that if you want to get introduced to Elvis, that uh, song and that show is Elvis at his absolute peak powers vocally. Uh, the band are just immensely tight. Uh, mm-hmm. The just like, the camera work, the, the way it pans into his emotions and uh, on his face. It's just what a what a song! Oh, it's just it, it's absolutely. You couldn't get any better. You there. couldn't. You couldn't get any more perfection than that. Than that song. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But I think the nineteen seventy two versions are a bit more reserved than that version. I find though, Leon, with the nineteen seventy two versions that Elvis can't reach that end note as well as they did in Aloha. It's a bit of a gribble there, and I thought, oh, don't know. About was that. he? Although, was he trying to? Maybe I don't know, but the Aloha just seems to work better for me, and uh, I don't know. I think the overall sound as well from Aloha is pretty good on that mm-hmm. song. Yeah, the, the, what what I will say this 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 version, the twenty sixth of January version, there's a there's a nice bit of echo on this recording, and what it does to me is it gives a bit more intimacy to the song than you get in Aloha, uh-huh. um, which. I think it it works. I think for what I was trying to achieve with this these earlier versions because it's a lot slower. And what you hear in this version as well, you'll actually hear Elvis sing the part along with the stamps. That, That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually I, I've sings noticed that about that version. Well, the one yeah. we're discussing now. Yeah, yeah. He actually sings that there. So. Um, I think I do think Alo has the best. The on tour version's not bad either. Um, no. Um, because they they also used it for this as Elvis at the end as well, didn't they? No, they didn't. No, they didn't. That no, was... that's a different. That's Hampton Roads, isn't it? Yes, it is. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but do you know the funny thing is, and this is what I find strange. A lot of people have said to me, um, and I actually actually put it up on 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 my channel because um, I was at, I was actually requested to put that one up, but people didn't want the raw Hampton Roads version. They wanted the This Is Elvis version with those strange overdubs. And yeah, it's a bit the strings weird, on it. Yeah. Which which is strange to me because these are the same people who probably <laughs> who, who probably dissed the RPO version. Oh. <laughs> I've just solid the whole atmosphere we're mentioning that, haven't I, John? It's that whole Daryl, Daryl, Daryl. Oh, like, no. no, 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 no. But that doesn't work. It doesn't. But do you know what? Um, I don't. I'm not a great fan of any post seventy three versions of um, the trilogy, apart from the twentieth of March. Show? 
the yeah, yeah the Memphis one yeah I think that's fabulous do you remember hearing it for the first time when, when you went to see the TCB band how good that was oh goodness me Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. When when they were still you know, the T C B band were still tight as a band and mm-hmm. you know, still you know, they weren't as old as they are. Yeah. But I mean Ronnie Tut still had it. And yeah. whoa, what an atmosphere that was. Shivers yeah. right down my spine. But conversely, um one of the earlier versions um non conventional versions should I say that I heard was in the silver box set, obviously in Presley, it came out in 1980, where you had that version from Dallas. Oh, and, right, okay. Yeah, and that kind of, that's where it kind of seemed it lost its intimacy, because you've got, like, where you would say, um, oh, um, well, the, the stamps start singing, um, and it, it, about them be about where they are, and um, Elvis says, well, you are here, you know, and I say, well, no, it's not really the same, you know, when you when you're making a joke in the middle of the song, and nah, then it just kills and it. it. Yeah, and then when they replace the flute with brass. Oh no. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't work at all. No, it, it it doesn't. But what I like about the Memphis one, um, that young female fan screaming Elvis twice in the audience when it's there's virtually not no other sound going on apart from Elvis. I really think that's priceless, and I think that adds an atmosphere to that that you just couldn't get in any sort of studio version. Exactly. Well, no, no, that's what I'm saying to you, Leon, because just that interaction with the audience, you just wouldn't get that on a live, on a, sorry, in a recorded environment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I, but I think, I think there's definitely, um, if you take that open and night version and then you take the one. The RCA recorded officially about what three weeks later, on the sixteenth of February. Uh, you you see the difference between those two versions already. Yes, of course. Uh, the song had already evolved, and I don't think that that sixteenth of February version is anywhere near as good as the twenty sixth of January opening and one in the opening show. I don't think it's anywhere as is good. Not, I'm not as I say, not I'm not saying it's a bad version, not in the slightest. But I just don't think it's anywhere near as good. Um, but of course, as, we, as we've said tw- about two or three times already, the Pinnacle is definitely the Aloha version. I just think everything comes, everything comes together there. Elvis, the band, and by the that point singers. in the show, Elvis is he he knows he knows he's got that that concert in the bag by now, mm-hmm. and he's just using all his professional powers to get it across. <laughs> But I think he was also making a statement as well because that that oh, yes. whole that whole show was it, it just it just um, screamed America. I mean, if you look at look at his his costume, the jumpsuit that he's wearing, um, the fact that it was going out um, live throughout the world, and then when you get that version of Aloha, I just uh, of of trilogy, I just think that that's it was a sort of patriotism coming out during that show. I think that's how that's that's how I look at it anyway. And he's looking at his band with real pride. Oh, absolutely! You know, and he, he knows. Yeah. It, he knows, and they know that they've done it. They've done it. Yeah. Well, I think we should just stick to the Aloha theme then, because after Trilogy, he does the introductions, and then another song that will always be synonymous with um, Aloha, which is and, "I'll Remember You." Oh, fat, another great song! I love that song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But at uh, uh, this version is my favourite version, live version. This is my favourite live version because I just think we we kind of mentioned a bit about it when we did um, You Gave Me a Mountain um, when we spoke about 10 minutes ago about that. Yeah. But I think that intro, I just think that, I just think the arrangement, the orchestral arrangement in the intro to this is absolutely magnificent. And I think, and I love the Aloha version, but I just think the intimacy of that song gets lost in that big arena. Yeah, it's better for a standing room only kind of environment where it's up close and personal. Because mm-hmm. uh, with, with that um, international centre where Elvis did all over Hawaii, the sound doesn't travel very well, mm-hmm. and you can t- you could hear that on the album. It sounds better. Sounds better actually when it's 
when you're watching it when it's when it's we know that the NBC version not the uh-huh. RCA version and yep. it's uh, it sounds better it sounds closer but with the album version it sounds too distant far away yeah um but like you say Leon with this version it, it's clearer you can hear everything more on this but, one I think I don't I think you had to include it in a little half um because of the background to it for the Cooley, fact that it, for Cooley, yeah, yeah who wrote yeah having right written now. the song yeah I think that and it gave Elvis the perfect opportunity to to talk about the charity um and the amount of money that they'd raised that evening that sort of stuff so it's I a, think it's a good it's a good thing plug for Elvis and it and it and it's a comfort thing as well because they don't know if Elvis could have just started shouting because he was too he was too nervous he could see it in him to talk so it was just a little bit of a you know I'll do that song and then we'll you know well we'll, we'll do the introductions and then we'll do that one and, yeah. and then but, uh, it worked for him but saying that and I know I've seen a bit it losing its intimacy that arrangement should I say it loses its intimacy because I quite like the uh, Spring Tours 1975 versions um, I quite I quite like those versions um, but they always also introduced the song by saying that he did it in a Loha show and then just as the intro's coming in he throws in that one line of Alfie <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. so I, I quite like those versions but because it doesn't have the full orchestral backing because it's on tour I don't think that the intimacy that I was talking about is an issue that's right yeah I don't think that's an issue um, but as I say I, I just think that um I prefer that live version to the studio to the studio version. Oh yes, oh yes. I mean, I, sometimes I don't mind it, but no, I do prefer the seventies version to the sixties version of that song. Yeah, Definitely. I think I, I think the the studio version. Um, I think it goes on a wee bit. I have you, have you listened to the, have you listened to the, uh, the unedited master? You mean where it's yeah, like, yeah. like four minutes or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it definitely it definitely does. Um, Which brings us to the last song that Elvis introduced uh, uh, within this season, which is "It's Over." Yeah, and the reason that that um, we're talking about this one is because that brings us on to "Standing Room Only," John. Yes. And that's, now, I think that's quite a, a an album that you like, isn't it? You like you really like that album, don't you? I really do, but um, I have to admit, after weeks of listening to it now, the only, <laughs> the only version I can listen to is the Richmond version. It's over? Yeah. That's, that's, that's quite an, That is quite an exceptional version, yeah. I know oh. you've got you've got that on your own channel, John. Yeah, that, that's... That is, I, had that's... To, I, had to, I had to put it on there because yeah. it, it, I think Ronnie touched the star in that song and, and the way Elvis... He messes about with the the vocal arrangements at the end, yeah. And it, he just keeps it up there, you know. Yeah. Um, oh. Well, uh, well, I give a wee bit of background to the album itself. The album itself, John. Yeah, please do. Yeah, okay. So, Standing Room Only was supposed to in 1971. Um, RCA decided to assign Joan Deary, uh, one of their senior producers, and she to oversee the production of a live album, and that was supposed to be compared from songs during. This, this engagement so RC rolled up um, from the 14th to the 17th of February um, eight shows were four days and the part of, no shows were recorded um, in the entirety but parts of the shows so those yeah. multi-time recordings the range and length from, depending on which show it was some show there was just one song others there was a dozen um, so that was supposed to go to an album which would be called uh, Standing Room Only Yep. But like many things throughout um, when Elvis was involved, um, internal politics became a massive issue. And then um, a, a conflict arose between Joan Deary and Elvis's own producer, Felton Jarvis, because they couldn't agree about who was supposed to be in overall charge of the project. So yep. the album was dropped. And what RC decided to do instead was to record one of the Madison Square Garden albums with the Madden Square Garden shows and they used the album art that they were going to use for Standing Room Only <laughs> for the Madison Square Garden show um, which is actually from the 26th of January opening show that we were just talking about so what that meant was 
all those multi-track recordings were just stored away in RCA's vaults, essentially forgotten about, um, and they were collectively known as the John Deere tapes. So some of the songs would appear through the years. I mean, Trilogy um, mm-hmm. would become a, a single, um, but then um, there were some one or two songs would be drip, fre- drip thread through the years. But it wasn't until 2009, um, after Sony had established the Follow That Dream, which is the Elvis, official Elvis Collector's label, and yeah. they resurrected that album. Um, and it's a, it's a two-disc album, isn't it, John? Yep. Two discs, yep, yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And um, among, the, among those recordings is the only known um, rendition of It's Over from that whole January engagement. And I absolutely love it. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a great set to have in your collection yeah definitely yeah. and it, sh- it should have came out it really in fact it's better than Madison Square Garden yeah the, the, the album itself um, yeah. because it's a bit more raw than, than Madison Square Garden I think um, but you know overall for the podcast today it's basically letting people hear the rawness of 72 the, the, how, how 72 started off yeah um, a little bit of a backstory behind the, the songs and, and stuff like that and um, yeah I mean it's another good one this week I've got to admit it's been a good one um, it's good to revisit this one because we like to say folks we've did it on the, the radio show and once it goes out live it's it, it's finished forever so at least with this one you could <laughs> you could revisit and stuff like that on the, on the channel and, and don't forget to go to Leon's personal channel to listen to these songs because I'll, I'll tell the story. I mean, we could only tell it through our voices, but you know, listen to the song because that's what we're here to review and listen to them yourselves and give us your feedback in the comments down below because that's yeah. that's what it's all about. And please don't forget to click like and uh, subscribe and share and even even dislike and you know because it's it's letting us know what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong because um, we can't get it right every single time we're just two guys giving our opinions on what we like and yeah. uh, so I hope you've enjoyed it this week um, I don't know what the plan is for next week it's be mainly on just basically pluck something out of the, out of the air sometimes yeah. which is sometimes good because it just throws us into it yeah, please, um, please, sorry, John. Yeah, please, please keep the suggestions coming that, um, in the comments yeah, of down below. Yeah, please keep them coming. Um, any suggestions that we've had before, um, we'll definitely take into consider any consideration. Um, John and I, we we've got our favourites that we want to cover. Um, because if we don't cover them, we'll be itching to cover them. <laughs> That's it. I mean, I think I think we're both. I mean, I don't know, Leon. I mean, if if we don't hear anything by, like, say, we always say by the Wednesday. Because we, yeah. we we pre-record the show on a Thursday afternoon, yeah, and uh, then we have to come up with something because we need to get it done for the Sunday, yeah. Um, but what are you thinking, Leon? If we've not got any suggestions by Wednesday, do you know I hadn't even given it any thought, and neither have I. I don't know. I mean, pff, you know what? We'll leave it. We'll leave it as now, folks, and we might just surprise you on Sunday. <laughs> <What did laughs> you do? Yeah. That's where it's going to be. We've got some ideas in there, but uh, we're, yeah. we're also going to look into um, doing a live show for you guys, a live broadcast. Yeah, uh, we'll see how it goes. But we want more subscribers first. We want a decent audience first. We don't yeah. want to just do it for uh, maybe say forty people listening. We want yeah, a really absolutely. good audience behind it. Um, so that's going to be happening in the near future. Um, there's lots and lots of things going to be happening within the, the channel. Um, Subscribers are a little bit slow, um, but the views are really high, so it's, I mean, we could take either or, but like I said, don't forget to share. If you like what you're seeing, share it on your page. Click like, like I said, it helps the channel grow and uh, it lets us see that we're doing something right and like I say, doing something wrong. So that's it for this week, folks. And uh, from myself, I'm Leon Smith. We'll see you next week. Take it easy. <laughs>